Come on, I don't know about you, but I'm free. The Bible says the Son makes you free. You are free indeed. Amen. Turn it to prayer wherever you are this morning and declare in the name of Jesus, I am free. I am free. I am free. Whatever it is, declare it. The Bible says we will decree a thing and it shall be established. Lord, I decree freedom in the name of Jesus. For somebody, it's your mind. In the name of Jesus, you are free. Emotionally, you are free. Biologically, you are free. Physically, you are free. Spiritually, you are free. Financially, you are free. In the name of Jesus, we declare our freedom. We declare our liberty in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Church, shout a better and bigger amen. All right. Hallelujah. I want us to lift up our brother to the hand of the Lord. Um, he volunteers, he comes around to help us with the drum. He's the one who takes care of the lawn of the church. Uh, he was a drummer for a season. I want us to lift him up into the hand of the Lord. I won't go into the details, but let's pray that there'll be a miracle. Amen. Come on. <laughs> I want us to pray. I want us to pray. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Let's pray. His name is Brother Fred. Brother Fred Davis. Let's commit him to the hand of the Lord. Where the doctors have failed, where they have no answer, God has an answer. Let's ask him that God will cause a miracle to happen in his life. That there will be a divine touch from heaven. Oh, somebody open your mouth and pray as if the prayer is for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up our dear brother Fred Davis to you, oh God. We know with you all things are possible. Lord, with men, they may look so uh, bleak, they may look so impossible. But Lord, with you, all things are possible. We lift up our brother to you. The Lord, there'll be a miracle. There'll be a miracle. There'll be a miracle, oh God. We release the angels of God to the room he is right now. We decree in the name of Jesus that there will be wholeness. Hey, 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 hey. Shaka Hando is na 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 ma mo she kaba ha i ko panda le de le de no nda la 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 ma she i ko manande le be no we speak the word of the Lord we speak the word of the Lord our brother be made whole be made whole be made whole he sent for his word and his word he led them from their destructions thank you father we give you praise we give you praise in jesus mighty name we pray there is power when we pray together as a church i want you to pray for yourself as well lord Heal me. Heal me of any disease. Heal me of any disease. Whatever is growing in my body, whatever is moving around my body in the name of our Lord Jesus, an end comes to it. The blood was shed for our healing. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace has been laid on him. 
and by his stripes we are healed whatever the disease is whether it be you know a mental disease a mental disorder a, a, a physical ailment in the name of Jesus I am healed healing is the children's bread I receive healing open your mouth and pray open your mouth and pray I receive healing I receive healing I receive healing it's the children's bread. It belongs to me. Let hard conditions be healed. Let sugar conditions be healed. Let whatever is growing in our bodies, let them shrink out of the body. The Bible says the strangers, they will be terrified. They will run out of their hidden places every stranger in my body every stranger in my blood I eject you out in the name of Jesus we are free we are free in Jesus mighty name we pray glory to the Lamb of God glory to the Lamb of God can you pray one more prayer point before we get into the word? You are going to pray this morning. Whatever is holding me back from being on time, from flowing with God's agenda for my life, in the name of Jesus, lose my location. Oh, I don't know about you, but some of these new gadgets now, there is a way they can track your location. I remember I was in a, I think I was in a city in Nigeria and my son could track exactly where I was from America are you still here child of God he, he was telling me where I was oh my God so anytime he calls me now I tell him you know where I am just you know look at the location glory to God oh come on you are going to pray whatever is slowing me down in the journey of life Whatever is monitoring my destiny, causing a delay, causing a slow motion, lose your location over my life. Every navigating system, every navigating device, let them catch fire. Open your mouth and pray. Shaka bomataya. Ikeneme no 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 sa. I'm untrackable. I'm untrackable by the evil devices in the name of Jesus. I'm untrackable by evil agents in the name of Jesus. Lose my location. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I pray for you. The evil ones will no longer be able to track you. You know, there are some of us they know when that breakthrough is about to happen are you hearing me child of God they know when that particular thing I don't know <laughs> maybe I don't know maybe it's just me anytime some money begins to build up for some reason you just begin to get calls from everywhere I'm like 
Are these people monitoring me or what is going on? Every evil device, every evil agent monitoring my destiny, monitoring my next level of improvement, monitoring my next level of hey, 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 let them lose our location. Let such devices, let such agents, let them catch fire. Thank you, Father. It is done. 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 Hey! They will not be able to track your children. Oh, somebody didn't hear that. They will not be able to track your marriage. They will not be able to track your money. They will not be able to track your promotion. They will not be able to track your destiny. Somebody may be saying, is this biblical? Is this scriptural? They were tracking Jesus. They had a tracker on him. The few folks from the east, they were tracking the star. Oh, somebody prayed this morning. Every tracker of the star of my life. Can you pray this morning? I think God wants to help two, three people here this morning. Take it serious. Every tracker of my destiny. <laughs> they were the one who took report to Herod. If it wasn't a divine intervention, that rerouted the destiny of the young man to Egypt. Every tracking device of the enemy, every track of my destiny, today I become untrackable. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. I'm untrackable. I'm untrackable. I'm untrackable. I'm untrackable. I'm untrackable. My marriage is untrackable. My destiny is untrackable. Somebody pray. Ah, in Jesus mighty name we pray oh, I want you to pray see I'm giving it to you as the Holy Spirit is downloading it into me you are going to pray some of us are carrying their tracking devices are you hearing me child of God kabosa kapayanaya Maybe something somebody gave you, unknowing to you. They say, okay, mix this with this, mix this with that. And it has become a tracking device of the enemy. I want you to pray. Lay your right hand on your head and say every tracking device that is in this body, that is in this destiny, that I am carrying unknowingly, let them catch fire. Let them catch fire. Let them drop out of my life. Let them drop out of my destiny. Somebody open your mouth and pray. Every tracking device, Masabane, 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 Kataya Dadamasha, catch fire, catch fire in Jesus. Mighty name we pray. Sit down. I'm untrackable. I'm untrackable. I'm untrackable. I'm untrackable. I pray for somebody here today. 
the enemy will not be able to penetrate <laughs> your defenses. Hey, the enemies will not be able to penetrate your defenses. Somebody shout amen. Let's try this. Let's see, maybe we'll flow. I want to share with you the secret of walking in dominion. The secret of walking in dominion. There are secrets. Anything that is walking in life, there are secrets attached to it. All right? There are things that make things work. There are things that make a home to work. Are you hearing me? When you see anything working in life, there are things that are enabling or enablers of that which is working. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 15. The Bible says, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 to 15. The Bible says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That he is the devil. And delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Ephesians chapter 1, 19 to 21. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, to us word who believe? According to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion. And every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. We're still reading the word of the Lord. Luke chapter 24 and verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on, on high. To have dominion, you must be endued with power from on high. Psalm 119 and verse 133. Order my step in thy word and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. <laughs> Walking in dominion is the birthright of every born again Christian. God never intended for his people to live as victims of situations or circumstances, but as champions. Somebody say, I am destined to be a champion. Come on, say it again. I am destined to be a champion. He never wants us to live in defeat and failure. That's not the intention of God for your life, for my life. He designed us to rule and be in church. It is our God-given assignment to rule and reign in this life. <laughs> Look at what the scripture says in Genesis Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 28. This is the way God planned it out for you and I. And God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Oh my God, 
you have aquatic dominion. You have rulership over the aquatic realm and over the fowl of the air. Oh, glory to God. And over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So it's not just aquatic dominion. You have atmospheric dominion. You also have a terrestrial or terrestrial dominion. Somebody say amen. amen. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. Somebody say God blessed them. God didn't just create, he put his blessing on us. And God blessed us. <laughs> I am blessed. Glory to God. I am blessed. <laughs> Come on, don't just say it casually. I am blessed. No matter what is going on, I am blessed. Why? Because God blessed the man and the woman he made. And God blessed them. And God said unto them. See, this is the composition of the blessing. This is what the blessing carries. And God blessed them. And God said unto them in the blessing, be fruitful. Somebody said be fruitful. Ah, come on, preach it to somebody this morning. Be fruitful. All right, in the blessing there is fruitfulness. So your life must always bear fruit. Your life must always bear fruit. Oh, your life cannot wither. Your destiny cannot wither. God blessed the man and he said, be fruitful. Bear fruit. Bear fruit. Bear fruit. And he said, multiply from the blessing. So not just being fruitful, but in the blessing, he wants us to also multiply. Glory to God. So as you become fruitful, you multiply the fruit that comes from the blessing. Amen, somebody. He said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish. Glory to God. Replenish the earth. And subdue it. Somebody says subdue it. Oh, that seems to me like being in charge. God was saying be in charge of the earth. Be in control of the earth. And have dominion over the fish of the sea. And over the fowl of the air. And over every living thing that moved upon the earth. That's the mandate that God gave to man. Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. Man lost that dominion. For if by one's offense, by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. All saved souls are God's representatives on the earth to establish his righteousness. It looks so simple, but I need to say it again. If you have been saved, you are God's representative on the earth to establish his righteousness. You are very important because God made you in his own image. When we lost it in the Garden of Eden, Jesus came according to Romans 5, 17 and won that same mandate 
and gave us that mandate again. So if you are saved, you have that mandate. You were created to have dominion on the earth. Adam and Eve were the regents over God's creation. What does the word regent mean? It means they were, they were governors in charge of God's creation. You are a governor over God's creation. Look at Psalm 8. Psalm chapter 8, verse 6 to 8. The Bible says, Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hand. Thou hast put all things under his feet as the mandate of God, all sheep and all oxen, yea, and the beast of the field, the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passed through the path of the sea. See, <laughs> Lions were not supposed to, men were not designed to be afraid of lions. Some of you, you see, even cockroach is like you want to lose your mind. I've seen even people with small hands. <laughs> hands is just walking in front of them and they are shivering as if their whole world has turned upside down. God never designed it that way. You were not meant to be afraid of tigers. You were designed to command them. Are you still here? But we lost that image. We lost that mandate. We lost that glory. But Jesus brought back that glory. We lost that dominion, but Jesus brought back. So as many that believed on him, he gave them power to become sons of God, to reclaim that dominion, to reclaim that governmental authority that man lost in the Garden of Eden. Are you still here? Psalms 115 verse 16. The Bible says, even the heaven of the heavens are the Lord's, but the heart he had given to the children of men. The heart he has given to us. We are supposed to be in charge. We are supposed to be in charge. However, through the first Adam, sin destroyed that image of God. Mankind, through the fall of Adam and Eve, lost the dominion to Satan. Painfully, when man divorced the voice of God and took Satan as his personal advisor, God became their personal adversary and drove them out of the garden of Eden. Through that, man lost peace. That's what we lost in the garden. We lost peace. We lost purity. We lost power. We lost prosperity. But the good news is that the dominion was restored through Jesus, who is the second Adam. That's a good place to shout hallelujah. So through Jesus, the dominion was restored. So that his bride, the church, can again have dominion. God desires us to become more like Jesus. Not only in character, but in spiritual authority and power. But if we are not like Jesus in character, we cannot walk in dominion. We cannot walk in his authority. This is where we have the problem today. And why it's very difficult for many so-called believers to actually walk in dominion. He wants us to walk in dominion. But for us to rule over our adversaries, we must be like him in our character. Let me share a few secrets with us that will help us to walk in dominion. Number one, 
Walking in dominion demands comprehensive obedience. Look at somebody and say comprehensive obedience. <laughs> Any believer that will walk in dominion will be the right sort of believer who is an all-round Christian. One who is positive for doing the right, but is equally determined not to do the wrong. The one who is ready to yield the right of way to the Holy Spirit. When he asks you, even though you are supposed to, to go straight, sometimes it can, it can alter your it can alter your movement. God wants us to obey him comprehensively. Anyone who will walk in dominion, you must surrender your will to his will. You must obey him comprehensively because he prefers obedience than sacrifice. Lord, this is how I feel. But this is your will. Someone who is able to exchange their own will for the will of God. Somebody say amen. amen. Number two. Walking in dominion demands freedom from sin. You cannot walk in true or total dominion if you are living in sin. 1 John 3 and verse 4 says, Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law, for sin is the transgression of law. Psalm 31 verse 1 says, Indeed, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Psalm 38 from, from verse 4 to 8, for my iniquities are gone over my head. As a heavy burden, they are too heavy for me. My woods stink and corrupt because of my foolishness. I am troubled. I am bowed down greatly. I go mourning all day long, for my loins are filled with the loathsome disease. And there is no soundness in my flesh. I am feeble and sore and broken. I have roared by the reason of the disquietness of my, of my heart. Psalm 38 verse 18. For I will declare mine iniquity. I will be sorry for my sin. That's the key to dominion. Any known sin, repent of it, confess it and repent of it. Sin is Satan in nature. The Bible says, for sin shall not have dominion over us. We are not under the law, but under grace. Romans 6 and verse 14. Sin is sorrow nest. Sin is suffering not negotiable. It is self-affliction. It is insanity and nakedness. Because when they broke the law of God, they became naked. Sin will open you up for the attacks of the enemies. Sin makes one to come under the control of the devil. The word is he that commits sin. 1 John 3.18 He that commits sin is of the devil. He that commits sin is of the devil. Sin will stop us from having dominion. 1 John 3 verse 18 says, He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. He's a serious sinner. For this purpose, the Son of God was made manifested. That he might destroy the works of, of the devil. He came to destroy sin through the shedding of his blood on the cross. Are you still here? 
Number three, to walk in dominion. Walking in dominion demands freedom from self. First Corinthians 9 and verse 27. Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Corinth. He said, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means when I've preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. To have dominion, you must be able to subdue self. It's not every cravings of the flesh you have to answer to. It's not everything that looks good to the eyes that will take you to the right destination. Spiritual dominion begins in you. You will never be able to exercise power or authority over anything until you have first conquered self. I was reading a book by, by John Maxwell the other day. He said, for you to be a, a great leader, you must first be able to lead yourself. If you are able to lead yourself well, as a man, then you can lead your family well. Until you conquer flesh, you are not a match for the enemy. Except we first take dominion over ourselves, over our habits, desires, and unbridled lust. We can never expect to have dominion over anything else. Some of you, you, have con you don't have control over your eyes. Those eyes are yours. Job said, I've made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully at a maid. You must be able to master yourself. Master what comes into your ear. Master the thoughts that you allow to roam over your heart. You can rebook those thoughts. Are you hearing me, child of God? You don't allow thoughts. Some of you, you, you don't cast out thoughts with thoughts. Are you hearing me? You rebook thoughts with words. You don't let them sit down. Something is telling you to go take your life. You rebook that thought in the name of Jesus. I shall live and not die. Something is saying to you to go talk to another man's wife. You rebook that thought. Say amen somebody. Amen. Except we first take dominion over ourselves, our happy desires, unbridled lust. We can never expect to have dominion over anything else. Self is too great a foe. It is very crafty, clever, and slippery. Self is a major hindrance to walking in dominion. It is subtle and sinful. It does not accept correction, except commendation. You know, there are folks, when you make a little correction, when you make a little Thing, I mean, they just flare off. Immediately, their defensive wall just come up. That self, may you dethrone self on the altar of your life. May you enthrone Jesus Christ as the Lord over your life. Somebody say, Amen. Self insists on its way. In a relationship. Oh, some, some of us are either our way or, the, or no way. Not even highway. Because sometimes if it's the highway, maybe you can help maneuver. It's either my way or no. No way. That's self. 
not listening to the other party, not considering their own feelings. It's an enemy of living a life of dominion. The secret of walking in dominion is dominion over self. Rise up on your feet. That's all the time we have. And declare in the name of Jesus, I have dominion over self. Ah, come on, come on, come on. I have dominion over self in the name of Jesus. Oh, I will walk in obedience. Sin shall not have dominion over me. Self shall not rule over me. I have dominion in Jesus' name. Plant three amen there. Amen. 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 It is done. You may be seated.